Ten toes in when we standing on business I'm a big stepper, underground methods Dark notch, get the most, not the lesser What's up guys, today we're going through more of the transitions and effects of this edit. For the next section we have a zoom transition going into this replicator effect. Before I add the transition, the first thing I'm going to do is add the replicator effect. So here's the video clip. I've already added the stabilization and speed ramping. I went through how I did that in part one of this video series. So if you want to go back and watch that, you can, it's still on my channel. For the replicator effect, the first thing we need to do is copy and paste the video clip. So if I hold down option and click and drag the video clip up and on this top layer, we need to mask out the subject. For that, I'm going to go to the effects tab. I'm going to use the Mroto AI effect for this and just click and draw around the subject. And this will really easily create a mask. If you haven't tried out this plugin, I'll leave a link to a free trial in the description so you can try it out. So now we go to the tracker and just track this mask throughout the video. So once a mask is tracked, we can go up to the effect parameters, go to output and then select mask video. Now we should just be left with the subject without the background. So now I can add my replicator effect. So if we go over to the effects tab and go down to the replicator effect, and I'm going to add the Russian doll preset onto this. And in the parameters, I'm just going to turn down the lift amount and turn up the angle amount, and then also click reverse stacking so that the subject stays in the front. And then I'm just going to add another one of those effects. These effects are already pre-animated. So the video will start off normal and then the effect will animate at the end, it will go back to normal again. So really cool preset with tons of different features. So now we have the effect added. I can select both of these, right click and go to new compound clip. Now I need to add the transition to the front of the video clip. If I added the transition, it would probably cut half the video. So a little tip is to go to the first frame on the video clip, hold down shift and press H to create this hold frame. Now we can add the transition to the front of the video clip and not cut off any of the video. So if we go to the transitions tab and the transitions I used for this was the target zoom transition. And if we double click that, it will add it to the front of the video. Now I just need to make sure the middle point of this transition is lines up with this hold frame at the end here. Now I can drag this over my video clip that I want to transition from. And if I select the transition, we have this control here, which we can put on the part of the video that we want to zoom into. So I want to zoom off to the right here. So now if I play that back, we have this nice zoom transition off to the right of the screen. For the next transition, we have this nice sliding in transition. And then the background of the video fades onto the screen. So here's my raw video clip. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either create a freeze frame and mask out the video. What I did was cut the start of my video clip and I use the Mroto AI effect to mask out the subject. If you don't have this plugin, you can just create a freeze frame and then use the draw mask tool to draw around your subject. It will still give a very similar look to the transition. So once we have the masked out version of the video, what we can do is let's select it, go to the transform tool. On the last frame, let's add a keyframe here and then move back to the beginning and just move this video clip off to the side. And if we zoom out, so now the video clip should slide in from the side. And to make this a bit smoother, what we can do is go to the keyframes here. On the first keyframe, I'm going to hold down command and just click and drag on the keyframe and drag this out so that the start of the transition will be fast. And then on this last one, hold down command, click the keyframe button. And on this one, I actually want to make really small until it disappears. And this will slow down the movement into the last position. Okay, so now we have the slide in effect. What I'm going to do is drag this first video clip back slightly, select the beginning and press command T to create a cross dissolve transition. So now we have the background fading on and we could also add some motion blur to this. So if we go to the titles tab and go down to motion blur and drag motion blur over this, over this first clip, you'll see it adds some nice motion blur. Motion blur doesn't come with Final Cut Pro, but it's a free plugin you can download. I'll leave the link to it in the description. So now we can select these 
and right click, go to new compound clip. Now I can drag this video clip over my previous video clip. And now we have this nice slide in transition. We can also retime this. So if I hold down shift and press B right here, and then create another speed ramp here, we can click this drop down menu, go to fast times eight, and this will create a nice speed ramp out of that transition. Moving on to this next transition, we have all of these separate parts coming onto the screen, which looks super cool, but obviously it's going to take quite a lot of time to create a transition like this. Here is the video clip that I want to use for this. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a copy. So hold down option and click and drag the video clip up. And on the first frame, I'm going to hold down shift and press H to create a freeze frame. And I'm just going to trim the end of this. So now we have this freeze frame. I'm going to add the draw mask effect onto this and start drawing around these different sections. So first I'm going to create a layer for these columns here and I'm going to mask them all out and then cut them up into different sections. Now what I need to do is go over to the crop tool and select the Ken Burns effect and switch the box so that the end box fills the screen. And then the start box, we can move down to the bottom and then right click and make sure ease in is selected. So now the columns should come in from the top. Now I'm going to add another draw mask onto this and just cut around the one at the end here. And then I'm going to split this video clip and on the second part of the video clip, I'm just going to disable the crop over on the parameters here. I'm just going to turn the crop off. So now we have just this one column coming down into position. And now I just need to repeat that step for each column. So if we copy and paste this video clip, the first one, drag it out, select it, and move this mask over to the other column. So now we have the second column coming down. And on this one, I'm going to split the video clip just slightly after the first one. So press B and split this video clip here, and then just disable the crop on this second video clip. And we can offset these a bit better. And the good thing about using the Ken Burns tool, when we crop these videos, it automatically changes the keyframes. So we don't have to worry about messing around with keyframes. Okay, so now we have two columns coming down into position. Now we just need to keep copying this process until we're left with all of the columns in position. And I also offset the start of these so that they come down one after each other. So now we have the pillars coming down into shot. Now we need to animate the rest of the parts in the video to also slide into shot. So what we can do is copy this video at the bottom and just delete the second mask on the video clip and we'll keep this one, we'll invert this mask. Let's actually disable all of these so we don't see them. So we have this and then we can drag in a draw mask onto this video clip and create another layer for the road here. And then go to the crop tool. And I'm just going to drag the green box into the black area. So now this part of the road slides on from the corner. If we copy and paste this and then delete the mask, add another draw mask, and let's create a layer for the roof as well. And then we can go to the Ken Burns effect and just move the start box down into the black area. Click done. This is just a very rough edit, but you kind of get the idea of how I made it. Finally, I'm going to add a layer for the subject and draw a mask around the subject. On this subject layer, I'm going to add a keyframe on the scale at the end and then move back and turn the scale down on this. So now we have the subject starting to zoom in from the back of the video. Now I can drag my original video clip back next to this. To tidy this up, we can select all of the layers and right click, add them into a compound clip. Now from here, we can retime the video clip. So I added a speed ramp at the start of the video. So if I move forward slightly, hold down shift and press B, that will create this speed ramp. 
then I can speed up the beginning of this video clip, which is actually reversed already. Drag out these tabs. So now we get a nice little speed ramp out of the transition. Now we can select both of these and drag them above our previous video clip. So now we have that transition coming onto the screen. I also added a bunch of shake effects for when these pillars are coming onto the screen. And for that, I just used an adjustment layer in the titles tab. Adjustment layers don't come with Final Cut Pro, but I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's a free plugin that you can download. And if I drag this onto my video clip and add my effects to it, the effects will affect all of the layers underneath. And that's super important for this because I want to add a shake effect to both video clips. So if we go to the effects tab, I'm just going to drag the rumble preset onto this. And that just kind of brings the transition to life slightly. Moving on to this last effect, we have this really cool glowing clone effect. So first we need to copy and paste the video clip. And then I'm going to use the MRoto AI effect and just mask out the subject. Now we have the subject masked out, I can add some effects. The first effect I'm going to add is the replicator effect and the XY replicator. And on the X split amount, I'm going to stretch that out. And then on the points, I'm going to add a lot more points. So now we have this clone effect. The next effect I'm going to add is the outline effect. And in the parameters, I'm going to set the position to zero and turn down the background opacity. And then I need to create another layer and just get rid of the neon effect and the replicator effect. So that we're just left with the subject. On the mask, I'm just going to change the settings so we get rid of that outline effect. I'm also going to add this light ray effect to the video. And yeah, there we go. That is the clone effect added. That's pretty much it for this one. In the final video of this series, I'll be going through the color grading and a few extra effects that I use. I'll also be giving away the color grading LUT that I use for free. So subscribe if you want to see that video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one. Ten toes in when we standing on business, I'm a big stepper, underground man.